Venipuncture is the process by which we temporarily insert a needle into a vein so as to take a sample of venous blood. It's one of the most commonly performed clinical skills for both doctors and nurses, so it's really important that you're able to perform it confidently and well. As we'll come to see, identifying good sites for venipuncture require both visual and tactile assessment, and as you gain more confidence, you'll be able to carry these out quickly and simultaneously. Venipuncture can be performed using different devices, often dictated by the situation and the quality of the patient's veins. These devices include a needle and syringe, a winged butterfly needle device, or, like we'll be using in this video, we have an evacuated tube system, such as a vacutainer. But before we carry on, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you don't miss out on any of our new content releases. The main indication for performing venipuncture is to allow us to take a sample of venous blood for investigation. But in the case of butterfly needle devices, they can also be used to allow short-term intravenous infusions as an alternative to venous cannulation using a catheter device. Contraindications to venipuncture are related to issues at the proposed site of insertion, which would warrant us choosing an alternative site. These contraindications include the presence of a hematoma, fibrosis, or infection at the proposed site, the presence of a vascular shunt at the site, or even the presence of a vascular access device, such as a central venous catheter, which would enable the easier and safer sampling of venous blood. After washing our hands, we start by introducing ourselves, checking the patient's identity, explaining the procedure, and obtaining their consent. Make sure the patient is in a comfortable position and that their arm is well supported at a height that's easy for you to access. We may then set up our equipment on a clean treatment trolley or tray. The equipment that we need to perform venipuncture includes non-sterile gloves, a tourniquet, an antiseptic wipe, some sterile gauze, hypoallergenic tape, an evacuated tube system with needle and adapter, such as a vacutainer, or a needle and syringe, or butterfly needle device. Additionally, we'll need blood collection tubes and the sharps disposal bin. Having ensured that there's no contraindications present, we put on our non-sterile gloves, and next we look to identify a suitable vein. The most common site for taking venous blood samples is in the antecubital fossa of the arm, where there are several superficial straight veins that are easily visualized and palpated, and thus are ideal for puncture. These are the cephalic vein, the basilic vein, and the median cubital vein which is the most commonly punctured vessel. After placing the tourniquet around the upper arm, we then assess the antecubital fossa, looking for the aforementioned veins, which should be superficial, straight, and easily palpable. If you're struggling to locate a good vein, then there are several things you can try, including gently tapping or rubbing over the vein, asking the patient to lower their arm, and using gravity to help engorge the vein, or, if you're still struggling, then try the other arm. Having identified a suitable vein, we then clean the area with the antiseptic wipe. Having finished with the wipe, we then dispose of it and leave the antiseptic preparation to air dry. This usually takes between 30 seconds and one minute. As we wait, we pick up our equipment and in cases where it's needed, we connect the needle with the evacuated tube system or a syringe if that's being used. We hold the device in our dominant hand, whilst our other hand applies gentle traction on the skin surface to help fix the vein further and prevent it moving as we introduce the needle. The needle is introduced with the bevel pointing upwards and at an angle of approximately 20 degrees from the skin surface when approaching superficial veins. The needle is slowly passed through the skin until we feel a give 
as it enters the lumen of the vein. And if using a needle and syringe, we will see blood appear in the flashback chamber. While stabilising the needle with our non-dominant hand, we pick up the blood collecting tube and attach it to the vacutainer device. The tube will automatically begin filling with blood as soon as it's connected. Once filled, we then detach the tube and connect the next if we're taking multiple samples. Once we've finished taking our samples, we release the tourniquet before gently removing the needle and instantly applying pressure with sterile gauze at the site of puncture. This may then be fixed with our hypoallergenic tape and ideally pressure should be applied for between 3 and 5 minutes whilst also getting the patient to keep their arm straight. We then safely dispose of the needle into the shop's disposal bin. After checking our patient is okay and the puncture site is not actively bleeding, we thank them, safely dispose of our equipment, wash our hands and correctly label the blood collection tubes whilst at the patient's bedside or in the clinical room before sending the collected tubes off to the lab. There are several potential complications to be aware of, both during and following venipuncture. These include the formation of a hematoma, which can be prevented by applying pressure with gauze for about five minutes. In patients who are on anticoagulation therapy, pressure may need to be applied for significantly longer. Vasovagal syncope, or fainting, may also occur in select patients. So if someone reports a previous episode of this, then it's better to perform venipuncture with the patient lying flat in the supine position. Inadvertent puncture of an adjacent artery may also occur, especially when trying to access deeper veins. If this does occur, then remove the needle and apply pressure for between 5 and 10 minutes. Pain from a nerve being touched by the needle may also occur during venipuncture. If this does occur, then gently remove the needle and again apply pressure. Other complications we need to be aware of are phlebitis and cellulitis. However, when using correct aseptic technique, the occurrence of these events is thankfully extremely rare. If you found this video helpful, then make sure you subscribe to our channel for more great free content. Or, if you want to make learning for med school and board exams easier, then subscribe to surgicalteaching.com and check out our expert endorsed videos, high yield revision questions, and our supportive online community. Surgical Teaching was designed by doctors to help students learn smarter. And right now, you can enjoy all of our great content for less, with 20% off our annual premium subscriptions when using the code STYouTube20. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon.